Hey everyone, welcome to the third and final video in my tree ant house project. If you haven't watched the other two videos, watch them after you finish this one. In those videos, I build the halfling sized tree house and sculpt the tree ant. Be sure to watch to the end of this video to see some glamour shots and close ups of the project and to learn about the lore behind these two characters. Let's get into this video and talk about the painting and embellishments I added to complete this project and bring these characters to life. As with almost all my projects, I'm always trying to learn new techniques to hone my craft. This project was no exception. I used a lot of new techniques, new materials, and even tried a new medium in polymer clay. I made my own flocking and flowers for this project as well, and even utilized my 3D printer for some tiny forest additions. Starting with the Halfling's Treehouse, I felt it needed a little porch, so I glued some balsa wood together and attached it to the front beneath the door before painting all of the wood bits a warm brown. I wanted the roof shingles to be made of some type of metal, which is why I opted to make them from chipboard in the first place. The goal in doing this was to create a stark contrast to the rest of the project that would be extremely nature-based. I painted the roof in a medium gray color and started to use some poly foam to sponge on some darker gray to give the metal some texture. I used the same method in a darker brown on the wood to give it some variation in color. The metal sponging didn't really give me the effect that I was looking for, so I gave it a dark wash and then sponged on a lighter gray. This was a little better, but I still wasn't satisfied. So I moved on to painting the door and window trim. I kind of do this often, you know, leaving something I wasn't entirely pleased with, working on something else for a bit, and then come back to it later. Kind of let it stew in my mind before going back to it. I dry brushed all the wood with parchment by folk art and then remembered I had planned for the roof to be mostly covered in moss. So I took my dry brush and brushed on some mossy green color and the shingles were looking good. I had originally planned for these corner pieces to be made of metal like the trim cap on the pitch of the roof, but I didn't like the really dark, almost black next to the lighter wood paneling of the rest of the house. So I took a pokey tool and hand drew in some wood texture and matched it to the rest of the wood trim around the windows and door. The chimney on the house was intended to be a standout feature of the project, so I painted it to look like worn painted metal. I started with some flat light grays and then sponging on a little bit of darker gray to make the bottom part look like tin. This wasn't very successful and I'll have to do some more practicing on faux metal painting. So I left it and painted the rest of the chimney red and the front door to match. So this time I remembered I actually had some metallic silver paint, so I painted the bottom part of the chimney silver and then added some selective metal silver over the red part of the chimney to show that it was indeed painted metal. After that, I took some pigment and added it to the chimney to make it look like it had some soot on it. And the house painting was pretty much done. It was time for the halfling druid to move in. I hopped on Hero Forge and modeled myself a little halfling druid to print on my 3D printer at home. I painted him off camera, but you will see him at the end of this video. Before painting the tree ant, I covered the base in foil and tape to protect it. To start, I primed the whole tree ant in some spray paint that I would not recommend using. I am not even sure I would prime any future sculpting projects as I don't believe they need it after they are baked and hardened. I wanted the tree ant to look very alive and warm, so I went with warmer, lighter browns for his body and head. I also wanted it to somewhat match the wood of the tree house on his shoulders to convey the almost symbiotic relationship between these two characters. Wanting to break away from habitual practices, <coughs> parchment, I decided to dry brush the tree ant in a very warm brown called Coffee Latte by Folk Art before giving the whole thing a wash. Because the tree ant is wielding a large axe that is just a dead tree whose root ball grew around a wedge-shaped rock, I painted the axe in a lighter, more weathered looking theme. I did this by using cooler brown colors and different dry brushing with, well, well, with parchment. I recently heard about oil washes and wanted to give it a try on this project. Again, I always want to try new things and see what works for me. And oil washes are fantastic. I was really pleased at how easy it was to mix just the right amount of color for my specific project. The other wash I use is great, but it basically is what it is and I have to mix it in large batches because it would take so much time to mix it in smaller batches for specific projects. The ratios of the ink, flow aid, and matte medium are pretty precise and honestly those materials aren't cheap. Oil paints can go a very long way and look really, really great. So I first applied a really rich warm brown and let it dry. I was amazed that not only did it bring out the details and the textures, but it made the whole thing look so much more vibrant and varied. I still felt like it needed a little bit more variation, so I mixed some greens together and did a green wash over most of it. This brought even more life to the tree ant and I was super happy. So I ended up actually mixing parchment with the coffee latte color and dry brushed over the two washes lightly. 
I didn't want to use parchment only because the differentiation between the living tree ant and the dead wood axe would be lost. This turned out to be the right choice and I'm really pleased with the result. With almost all the painting pretty much done, it was time to bring even more life to this project with embellishments. I started with something new, making a really thick mossy rooftop. Previously, when making moss, I've mixed flocking and PVA glue and just brushed on the moss in places. But I wanted a really thick, luscious rooftop of moss, the kinds you see on cabins in like the Northwest or in really rainforesty areas. So I just looked up how it was actually done in real life. Apparently you just get the moss and kind of thread it through chicken wire and put it on your roof. I wasn't gonna be doing any threading and I still plan to use flocking, but I figured I could make sheets of thick moss and then apply it to the roof. So I did. I won't be going over how I did this in this video, but look for a future techniques, tips, and tricks video on this later. I really enjoyed doing the oil wash so much that I ended up adding it to the roof as well. I used a dark blackish brown to create some sooty looking runoff below the chimney and it had a really great results. I applied a green wash over all the green dry brushing I did earlier and it really made it pop and just brought an overall vibrance to it that I really loved. I painted his eyes green and then added the leafy foliage on the branches off camera, but you can see exactly how I did that in the tree video I made a while back. It was the same method. As mentioned in the part two video where I sculpted the tree ant, I had some issues with the armature because I'm a noob at this. Basically, the feet didn't touch the base, which caused it to rock back and forth, which was not good. To stop this from happening, I slid some popsicle sticks under the feet and super glued them in place. With this solved, I was ready to apply the base with some dirt and flowers and other stuff. The last thing to do was to create the appearance that the tree house was actually lashed to the tree ant's branches, even though really it's gonna be hot glued. To do this, I made some loops out of some thicker wire to create eye loops for ropes and glued them in place. I made some rope, which is a very easy process and will likely make a techniques, tips, and tricks video in the future on it. I wrapped them around the branches to attach it. And just like that, this thing was finally finished. This was a really long project and I really enjoyed making it. I learned so much and I really hope that you guys enjoyed the finished product. So let's take a closer look at it and let's learn a bit more about the lore behind these two characters. The material plane of Tremulea is covered in large mountains, lush forests, lakes, and streams, and is teeming with all sorts of life. Large cities, bustling towns, and quaint villages dot its luscious landscape. The land is bountiful and provides for wildlife and those blessed to live beneath the great canopy of life and call it their home. Burrow, the tree ant, and Castus High Branch from the Blue Forest are cultivators of the forests across Tremulea. With Castus being a druid of the Circle of the Shepherd and Burrow being, well, Burrow, this not so unlikely duo travel across the Great Canopy, serving the forests and the people that rely on them, removing any deadfall yet to have fallen, chopping it into piles of wood with Burrow's great tree axe, these two friends provide for the folks who would be tree fellers and ensure they do not fell any living trees. Planting as they go, they cover great distances through all seasons, enriching the lives of all folk, wildlife, and plant life to boot. But something's amiss under the great canopy as of late. The would-be tree fellers are felling living trees. Where has all the deadfall gone?
you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. It's honestly my favorite thing I've ever made. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing for future videos like this. You can also follow me on Instagram where I post updates of the projects I'm working on. But as always, take care and I'll see you in the next video.